And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're just going to start straight in with the most amazing thing I've seen in a long time. Uh, we're going to look at the blueprints here and you'll notice plus 17 animal husbandry. I didn't know you could get the numbers to go that high. Well, okay, they're an anemic, which, yes, they, that is literally the worst. You never want an anemic. Also, they're narcoleptic, which generally is a giant no-no for me. But at the same time, plus 17 animal husbandry? I've never seen one that high. I, I have to hire them. I can't not. Like, have you ever seen someone with plus 17 in any skill ever? I'm thinking for names for the ultimate in animal husbandry. We've got, we've got to go with Jason Momoa. Just, you know, he did that whole Aquaman thing. Right, uh, then I just got to make sure they never leave the base. The reason being, once they go into an atmosphere suit, they're going to be even worse. Oh, God. Uh, actually, you know what? Another thing we'll probably have to do with them is make sure that they go straight into our gym. Yeah, we're going to have to get them working out. This here is going to be Jason's life for the next 50 to 60 cycles. It'll be a while before we can use them as a good rancher, but yeah, I'm thinking we're probably going to do some insane ranching with them at some point. Probably we're going to dedicate them to slicksters. Now, considering their slow speeds, we might even want to build them living quarters down here. Also, uh, we had some sulfur problems. It turns out there was a break here in the abyss light, and some of the sulfur actually melted and flooded the, uh, the oil biome. It's amazing. The, the game will always find ways to break something on you. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Uh, the plan. We are going to go back to top... Top air, oh, whatever, this place. And uh, we are going to finish off what we started. We're going to finish off the cooling loop so that we've got cooling for the rest of the base. Uh, we're going to put some oil into this so we can refine some metals. And then we're going to dig out the last of this natural biome. Though I'm not going near the uh, the nuclear one or the radium one. It's just this this whole biome is not finished as far as I can tell, so there's no point going in there. Though we might go down here into this biome. I, the ice biome? It's, wow, it's really cold. Minus 91. Oh my god. Oh yeah, but let's uh, let's bring the crew over and get started. Well, once we bring in the petroleum, two rounds of petroleum, we'll bring the crew in and start building. The first thing the crew are going to get dug into is all of the piping. This will be our cooling loop. It'll just go all the way around the base and just keep everything at a nice even temperature so we never have to worry about it again. Um, yeah, all this piping is definitely not going to help frame rates, but you know what? The game's already struggish, so who cares? Uh, after the 141 dupe base, it, this feels absolutely fast. Though I really wish the mods were kicking in right now. Well, mods will soon hopefully be up to date. That should start to stabilize the temperatures in here. We won't have to worry about our crop stifling or any problems in this section of the base. Then that just means we need a renewable water source. This water is not going to last forever and we're using that to provide oxygen to the duplicates staying here. So I think for oxygen we're going to be using ethanol, which will burn in a petroleum generator. It'll also give us our carbon dioxide. This uh, carbon dioxide pool we've been working with down here won't last forever. Unless we bring in, well, we could start burning more wood, but you know what, no. We are going to make ethanol, which will give us dirt for a renewable sort of meal wood, and it'll give us petroleum or ethanol, which will give us a renewable source of water. And then this whole place should be self-sustained. Though, oh wait a minute, we should probably maybe tap another volcano or two. We got an aluminum one here. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Let's dig out the let's dig out the gold volcano first down here. I'd like to get that tapped into, and once that one's done as well, then we'll move on to the aluminum one. While we're busy demolishing this corner of the map, we're also going to siphon off some of this polluted water. Sieve it in a water sieve, and oh, I should probably put some bricks beneath that, so you know that would be a smart plan. Uh, sieve it in a water sieve, and then dump that into our clean water tank. All the water down here is germ free anyway, so it'll just get dumped in there, and then we can sieve that for oxygen later. It's a good use of that water to tide us over until we're finished with uh, what we have planned down here. My timing for taming these volcanoes is amazing. They're all, they're all either dormant or just going into dormancy the moment to tap into them. We'll, we'll find out in 70 cycles if this one works or not. Uh, this one over here will be back and active in 14.3 cycles. So yay, we'll find out then. Oh, and I think we can deconstruct some of those power wires there. I don't think we need those anymore. Remind me to sweep those up before they melt. Yeah, what was the next plan? Well, with all of that done, I think we've got to do the tungsten volcano. Ugh. Or the aluminum volcano. This... This is going to hurt. We're going to have to put an active cooling solution in here because this thing generates way too much heat. Hmm, let me think for a minute. Before we get too deep into this, I'll try and explain why I am so wary about tackling one of these. Uh, these things uh, erupt aluminum at 1726 degrees, which doesn't seem that bad when you compare it to gold. Gold erupts at 2600 degrees, so gold would seem a lot scarier. However, it's to do with this, uh, where is it, we got some gold here. Let's go in and have a look at the specific heat capacity. This is how much heat it can hold. So we've got 0 0.129. Now, let's just compare that with some aluminum over here. 
So aluminum has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.910. Let me grab a quick calculator. My calculator tells me this means it can hold seven times as much heat. That means if you want to cool, say, a lump of aluminum from 1,000 degrees and a lump of gold from 1,000 degrees, it takes seven times as much cooling power to cool down the aluminum. It's crazy. So we're really going to need to pack in the cooling here. Now, normally you just strap a steam turbine on top. This one down here runs on passive cooling, as in the output water coming out at 95C keeps the, the steam turbine cool. However, there's way, way, way too much heat here. We're going to have to use an active cooling solution by jamming an aqua tuner in here as well. And I think two steam turbines should do it, but this thing might still overheat. So we're going to leave ourselves some space at the back just in case we need to stick on a, another steam turbine later. We should be able to just stick one on right... Ooh, actually, no, there's going to be that in the way. You know what? Never mind. If it goes badly wrong, we'll just seal it up and never open it up again. You know, the, the traditional method. I think we'll plug this sucker right into the main grid. We can just pull down the power from there and just, well, why not? This should generate a decent amount of power for us, so yeah, we can add it into the batteries. Though in all fairness, with the amount of solar we've got on this planet already, I'm not really that worried about heating. Or about power. Alright, now where were we? Uh, yeah, we're going to need to stick in about four tons of water into the sucker, and we're going to need to import a bunch of petroleum. Oh, and we also need to vacuum this area out. Taking some advice again from the comments, I'm going to make the outer liquid lock out of water. Namely being, well, we don't have to worry about that getting heated up. If you notice over here, it's not sucking any heat from the side. And especially because we put this airflow tile in the middle. Normally the only way heat could transfer was this would heat up this tile, this tile would transfer to there, and with insulated tiles you get a tiny bit of heat transfer. But by putting in an airflow tile, that effectively makes it a vacuum, and yeah, zero heat transfer. If we wanted to be really good about it, we could probably delete that tile, and yeah, but then we're going way too far. Okay, we've already gone way too far. But that means we just have to get enough petroleum to fill here, so about two loads, two rockets should give us enough, and uh, oh, we can get rid of that gas pump, we don't need that anymore. We're almost ready to open this up, and we're going to have four tons of water in here. Uh, power-wise, where was it? Ah, yes, we need to put it in some power here. So I'm thinking, let's just stick in a quick large transformer, make it out of gold, and chuck it down right there. Plug it into the main grid, and done. That will power the aqua tuner. And I think what we can do then is just get rid of all of this. That doesn't need to be connected onto the rest of the grid. After all of our prep work is done, we finally get to break open this volcano. And hopefully it's going to activate sometime in the near future. Well, we'll find out once we finish analyzing it. Now, another thing we're going to have to worry about here is overpressurization. This uh, this comes up if you're trying to make one of these. You can't go above 150 kilos of steam pressure in here. Reason being, volcanoes can't erupt if the pressure around them is greater than 150 kilos. I think in this tile here. But just make sure your steam doesn't go above 150 kilos or the volcano won't erupt and you'll just be... Well, once it turns the water to steam, the volcano will stop erupting. So that's why I use four tons in this design, and I use two tons in this design. You start going above that in terms of water, as in 2,000 and 4,000 kilos respectively, you start gaining problems. So this should be well below the uh, the 150 kilo mark. And if it you do mess up and you end up with too much steam pressure in here, what you can do is just either pump it out with steel pumps. Well, you might have to use something a little bit stronger than steel, but pump out some of the water or get rid of it somehow, or you can siphon water coming out of the steam turbine and dump it off into a separate tank, just until it goes down below 150 kilos. Then the uh, volcano will keep erupting, no problems. Now this thing here, pretty straightforward. This steam turbine here is going to provide cooling for this loop. This cooling loop will provide cooling for the steam turbine so that they don't overheat, and we might extend it on to do something else. Even the uh, little power transformer there is stuck along the same level. That way all the, uh, the, the power production or the heat from that gets cooled down. We might even throw some other stuff in there later. But that should take care of this place. Well, oh, wait, nope. One last thing we got to do. We got to put together water production. Uh, so we got to figure out how we're going to turn wood into water. Fungal spore. We don't want any, anything else here. I think we got a nice open space down here. I think we stick in a quick ethanol refinery and we should be good to go. While the dupes are cleaning up around there, I thought I'd cover some of the minor changes they made in the background on some of the other planets. Namely this one here, the, uh, the sulfur. The sulfur from this is, uh, well, it was causing problems. So on suggestions from the comments, what I did was I put in a brick here, and that way when this sulfur pours down, it lands on top of this crude oil, and then it just sort of, well, floats across the top. And because it's floating across the top, it can't actually escape any uh, outside of the radius of the auto sweeper. I used to end up with sulfur over here. But now, now it sort of all gets trapped in here. Now, we did have a few problems with uh, blobs of sulfur actually solidifying. It kind of got a little bit out of hand. 
mainly because uh, sometimes this gets vented and it stops the oil from flowing. You'll see there that even though that's constantly churning, there's no oil plopping over the edge. That's because it vented recently or the gas was vented and that causes a whole bunch of it to get spit out really quickly. So to help with the cooling, we maybe diverted our crude oil pump. So our crude oil now pumps through here, then goes across here before getting sent over to the other side, which is actually fine. It just means it's even warmer when it goes out to get boiled in the petroleum boiler, which is actually more efficient anyway. At the same time, while it's going through here, it cools down all the sulfur, and we end up with a nice, well, with all the sulfur not causing us any problems. And then, of course, that sulfur all gets picked up and sent through our cooling loop before getting sent back to home base. That was just, well, it just worked out really nicely. Uh, as for a petroleum boiler, where is it down here? Ah, yes. The temperature efficiency on this thing is absolutely excellent. Look at that, 400 degrees. Oh, 399. It goes between about 399.5 and 400 degrees so we're pretty damn close to perfect to perfection on that we only have to heat it up about three degrees down here before it hits perfect temperature so this has turned out to be a very efficient choice uh one thing though we do need to start taking care of that carbon dioxide it's hit uh, 62 kilos which that's a lot that's a lot of pressure though we'll eventually get some slicksters down here to start consuming it I, I, we might need a lot of slicksters like 40 or 50 some but that's okay, that's okay. Where's, where's Russell? Russell should be, uh, or not Russell, Jason. Jason should be uh, training up to become our best rancher of all time. What's their skill level of that? Athletics, three. Wow. Well, they're up to plus eight. It's just the minus five from anemic is really, really painful. Anyway, uh, where were we? Ah, yes, back to here. I'm just going to do a quick sweep up, tidy up the map, and get ready for putting down our little build. I think we, I'm not sure exactly how much water we want out of this. We might go with some, hmm, we might go with enough oxygen for two people. Oh, gold volcano, gold volcano is erupting. And, oh, damn it. You'll see here that this water's coming out and it's actually cooling down the steam turbine. Well, actually it's going to heat this place up first. It's not quite hit it. You know what, we'll, we'll come back in maybe another 20 or 30 cycles and this should be sorted. The uh, aluminum volcano is actually active as well. It's next dormancy is 84 cycles. So we're going to get to see that active as well. Yeah, but uh, where was I? Ah, yes. Finishing a little bit of tidying up. Well, the aluminum volcano is turning out to be interesting. Jesus. It's already bricked itself in. I'm not even sure how. What? It, th that's only 194 kilos. How, how is that? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see. We may have to start installing temperature shift plates, though I'm pretty sure the temperature shift plates will probably just get melted. I'm supposed to make them out of aluminum. Actually, no, that's even worse. Um, yeah, we'll have to play around with that some more and see. But so far, the steam turbines are handling the heat, though. Yeah, let's give it another couple of uh, eruptions to see how that handles it. All of this sweeping up is taking way too long. Let's get ourselves our ethanol distillery on our way. Now, we're going to stick in three ethanol distilleries. I was doing the math in the background, and it turns out with six wild trees, you can support one ethanol distillery. We have more than six wild trees, though in all fairness, some of them are not quite uh, getting all the space they could have. Like this one here, yeah, I'm not really sure this is uh, in our best interest. In fact, I think that one can go. That can hopefully give some more space to the other trees. But yeah, if we have six wild trees, oh, you know what? We'll move that ladder over there as well. With six wild trees, we sh per ethanol distillery, we should easily be able to support three of them. And that's going to give us a bunch of water. I think it's about 185 grams of water per ethanol distillery. Well. We turn the ethanol into, or we create the ethanol, the ethanol gets turned into petroleum, the, or no, the ethanol gets burned in the petroleum generator and that produces carbon dioxide and polluted water. The polluted water we sieve and that will, well, that's the water we're counting. Now, let's see if we can't uh, build this in a little bit nicer. Power-wise, we are just going to run a bunch of big heavy wire through here. If we do this right, we shouldn't ever have to come back in here, so we are going to, well, we're going to set this up with an auto sweeper right there. That auto sweeper should do most of the heavy lifting. And we'll just seal this up. It'll produce carbon dioxide and our water for us. And that'll be it. It'll be our rocketry program fueled and it'll be our polluted water providing us with oxygen. We are going to stockpile a whole bunch of wood right here. Uh, well, lumber. That lumber is going to get dumped into this conveyor chute and get sent down here. From there, this should be able to load it up. I'm not exactly sure where the loading point is on this ethanol distillery. So we might have to put in another auto sweeper up there. But I think the yeah the two bottom ones should be fine. Now down here is where all the polluted water is going to go. But we should really cool this all. Yeah, I'm thinking we should put in a cooling loop through here. We could of course try boiling it, but then we'd need steel, and it gets an awful lot more complicated. I've tried using a a hot steam sauna type of ethanol distillery before. It gets really awkward. The ethanol comes out so hot it usually boils in the pipe unless you're really really careful. And I don't want to be that careful. So instead we're going to cool the whole thing down, which means we'll just plug it into our cooling loop up here. Hmm. 
Yeah, so I think we just sort of break off a, a line of this down here, run it through this whole thing in it before sending it on to the rest of the base. All we do is we build it up. We're just going to make it out of igneous rock for now. I'll replace some of the segments in here with radiant pipe later. Uh, for now, I just want to get this running, and I think... Oh, we should probably stick a water tank on this. Just a little bit of a buffer tank so it makes it expanding and contracting this a little bit easier. And I think we'll throw it in... Actually, over here there's plenty of space. By chucking in a, just a liquid tank there, it means we... This... Uh, this cooling loop can't ever jam, and we'll just we'll store up a little bit of a stockpile of water here so that as we expand this loop it doesn't sort of uh, cause any problems. Also, I mean, worst case scenario, we have a, an emergency stockpile of water if things go horribly wrong. Now, is that all done? Yeah, I do believe it is. Let's just stick in a few radiant pipes here. You know, we got plenty of aluminum. There we go. A few pieces of uh, radiant pipe just to make sure the chill spreads out, and then uh, all we have to do to get this running... Oh, actually, I should probably stop adding so much water into that liquid tank. How are we looking? Yep, 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 that's plenty, that's plenty. We'll just, uh, we'll deconstruct this over here and we can replace it. That's, uh, that's how I inject water into the cooling loop. I just sort of connect those two pipes together and it injects water quite quickly. Though, uh, I do accidentally sever the water to the oxygen production when I do that, so, uh, let's not do that for too long. Uh, that plugs into there. And then once that's built, we can connect this here and we should have the loop extended. There we go. And all we do is deconstruct these pipes here. And hopefully they get around to that before the water makes it too far. Boom. Problem solved. We now have a cooling the cooling loop extended, and it should get filled up from all the excess water we've got in here. You can see it's actually spreading... Well, it will spread out once the water gets there, or the, the gap in the pipes gets there. All right. Done, done, and done. I think we can seal this sucker up now. I think we'll put one door maybe this side. Yeah, I was going to put it that side until I realized I've got the automation wire in there. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to the automation wire in a minute. And there we have it, it's final form, though not quite plugged in yet. Uh, first thing we're going to do is lock the doors, and then we're going to hook up the power. Now the reason we locked the doors is we didn't want them trying to fill up the ethanol distilleries just yet, and now we can start vacuuming out the area. We'll get rid of all the oxygen out of here. Uh, if the pressure is below, yeah, there we go, that'll keep it on forever. And we'll leave that at above 500 kilos for the water pressure. Now all of that oxygen at the moment, or whatever gases are in there, are going to get pumped up here and just dumped into space. We don't really care about them for now. Uh, Ethanol-wise, actually, let's try something here. If we just dump in a little bit of wood, I want to see something. Uh, great. Did, did I not power that? How? Damn it, I placed it right through a power line. And of course I missed by one. Never mind. They forgot to put in the, the water pipes as well. We need to have a, a water output pipe here. Uh, we'll just uh, disable those buildings for a moment and get everything sorted. So it turns out I forgot, like, a lot of things. Uh, namely, I forgot that this is also going to produce polluted water, and we need some way of extracting that out. Or, uh, polluted dirt. So the polluted dirt that comes out of these, I want to put into this conveyor loader. God, that's loud. Uh, so we'll get the polluted dirt, and we'll send this up there. Oh, conveyor chute, don't need you. And then we're going to build a bunch of composts up here, and those composts are what's going to take care of all of the dirt. Uh, we'll put... One second, we'll put bricks underneath those. So those compost will take the polluted dirt, turn it into clean dirt, and that clean dirt we can use to run our meal wood to keep the food going here. So this provides all the food and oxygen we should need, assuming we can get this working in a timely fashion. Finally, we've got, I think, most of it in place, though uh, we may have left a chunk of oxygen in there I didn't want to. Uh, very simple. Polluted, uh, the lumber comes in here, gets dumped straight into this conveyor loader and dropped down here on this chute. That, uh, well, this area here is in range of this auto-sweeper. That auto-sweeper picks up the wood and dumps into these two ethanol distilleries. This one here, well, this one here has to actually have access to that spot, so that's why this uh, second auto-sweeper was put in. That dumps lumber into this ethanol distillery. And then any polluted dirt that pops out of them, because they do produce polluted dirt, that polluted dirt is picked up and shoved into this cargo loader. So you see both cargo loaders have access to it, and there goes the polluted dirt. Now, that polluted dirt gets sent across here, goes all the way up here, and gets dumped out of that conveyor chute. And then that polluted dirt just gets composted. After it's composted, well, we have dirt, and that dirt gets fed to the mealwood, which means food is provided. Now, what have we got here? Ooh, sweet legs. You know what? We will take those here. Why not? Well, it's just more meat for free. And done. Well, oh, polluted water comes down here. Once this hits 500 kgs, or actually, let's make that 250, we should be fine. Once that goes above 250 kgs, that water will get pumped out of there. Now, water gets pumped up here, gets dumped across into this water sieve. This water sieve, once it's cleaned it, will send it over here to get dumped into our water tank. Now, eventually, this water tank will fill up. When it does, the automation, it will hit this uh, hydro sensor. If this is above, say, 250... Above 250... Wait, below 250... That sends out a green signal. That green signal makes sure that the petroleum generator stays on, and the petroleum generator keeps burning off the ethanol. 
So as long as the ethanol is being burnt off, we're producing water which can get sieved to turn, be turned into oxygen. And by that I mean all of the water that goes in here gets pumped across to get turned into oxygen to support the colony. So now we have an infinite supply of oxygen and an infinite supply of food. And assuming we can keep this whole thing powered, which is, well, we're solar powered, this should run indefinitely. We should have infinite food, infinite water, infinite everything. Though I haven't checked the numbers on the dirt. I'm presuming there's enough. Oh, you know what? I'll check the dirt numbers just to be sure. Oh, that's actually... Damn, that's, that's way too much dirt. We're emitting about... Uh, between these three ethanol refineries, we're doing about a kilo of dirt a second. Uh, these composts can only do 100 grams a second, which means we need 10 composts just to keep up with the dirt we're producing. 600 kilos of dirt. Now, mealwood plants take 10 kilos of dirt per cycle, which which means we can support 60 mealwood plants. Which, um, yeah, uh, we're producing way too much water for oxygen and way too much polluted dirt for, for food. Um, oops. <laughs> okay. Well, this base is now perfectly sustainable, though I don't think one duplicate's going to be able to run at all. The reason being, there's just, like, how can you run 10 composts at the same time? I suppose eventually this will top up at water and it will cut back on the amount of dirt and stuff produced, but uh, it's definitely going to be busy times for this, for, uh, this base. Uh, let's see how our... Ah! Oh, our gold volcano is erupting. Perfect. What's the temperatures up here? 96. Excellent. Okay, so the steam turbine here is up to 96 degrees. What happens here is when this destroys heat, 10% of the heat it destroys is released as heat at the stop of the steam turbine. Then what happens is it also re releases 95 C water. So 95 C water comes down here. Now if this steam turbine goes above 100 degrees, it stops working. Which means we can use the 95 C water here just to cool it down a little. And you notice here it comes out at 95, by the time it gets to the end it's down to, or it's up to 96.8. So we're actually dumping about one, well, two degrees of heat in there it seems. A little bit more. It's still going up, but it should cut out at a safe amount. 97.3, 97.4. So as you see there, we're, we're actually using the wastewater as a heat dump. And because gold produces so little heat, we're able to get away with this. It's very nice. Now, if this was an iron volcano, you need two of these. I, I have a tutorial in the summer because they can do it. There's a, Iron does not actually produce that much heat either. Well, a lot more than gold, but two, heat, two steam turbines can kill it. This one over here, yeah, I haven't really tested this trying to do a passive cooling, so I went with an active cooling solution just to be safe. That's why we've got this cooling loop going behind the steam turbines to keep them cool. But so far, this seems to be working out. We've actually managed to collect a fair chunk of uh, aluminum here. We even burned, we even used a bit of it to, for some of our cooling loops and things. But I think we have finally managed to, to actually successfully complete this planet. It now requires, well, one duplicate to maintain it, and we can walk away. Uh, also, you'll notice this is all the lumber we've collected so far. We've got, uh, how much lumber is there? We've got 26 tons of lumber there, then another 20, 40, 60, 80 tons of lumber there. The only thing we're missing is we're going to want to grind up a bunch of sand. There's no sand, unfortunately, in this place. So we're going to need sand for the polluted water that's got to be saved. Another, well, I was considering a few ob other options. Others there, we could dump the polluted water into the volcanoes here and get it to boil. That's an awful lot of effort. Reason being, we've got to keep the steam pressure here below 140 kilos, and we can't really judge the steam pressure. Reason being, atmosphere sensors only go up to 20 kilos. And if we try to keep the steam in here at 20 kilos, that'll cause problems. So I'm thinking it's just easier to grind up a bunch of sand. It will eventually run out, but it will take so long, it's just, it's incredible. We should be fine, as long as we, we leave 20 tons of sand here. And I think, I think that's everything. There's one more vent down here, but I, I'm not even sure. You know what? Let's go down and have a quick look at it and see what it is. And what do we have here? We have nothing. Damn it. Okay. Give us a little bit more. Come on, mother lord. And hot polluted oxygen vent. Well, considering how... Yeah, considering how cold it is down here, I, I, I really have no problems releasing that. Uh, we might want to put down a little bit of a deodorizer down here, though. Uh, that should only take a few minutes. Couple of deodorizers, dig this out, and we'll get ourselves some free oxygen. Though, uh, who really cares? And now, uh, with that done, there was one last thing I wanted to do. Oh, yes, I wanted to get rid of the gases out of here. I think... Will it get deleted, I suppose? Oh, God, there's 14 kilos of pressure. I think what we'll do is we'll just stick in a gas... A mesh block up here at the top. True, we're gonna let some carbon dioxide out, but if we do that, we can hopefully let out a bunch of the oxygen just because. You know, I'm beginning to have second thoughts about this. There's there's 17 kilos of carbon dioxide pressure in there. Um, I got a better idea. There we go, much better. We'll put in a quick mechanized airlock above it with an automation switch attached to it. 
that way we can open and close a door and let the uh, uh, oh let the let the stuff out gas out as needs be and then have an instant way of stopping it if it gets too out of hand now is this strictly necessary probably not no but I do want to do this just because it's, it's not an OCD thing it's just a I would prefer this not to be there thing we have almost gotten most of the oxygen out of there that was actually relatively painless we, we let one little bit of carbon dioxide escape I am not going to cry over that uh, how are we looking down here almost at, well we're not quite at the 250 kilos of water yet this system seems yeah reasonably okay I mean it only produces a small amount of water but we don't really need that much to support the colony we're going to be leaving behind here. Was all that time and effort necessary to get the oxygen out? No. Totally worth it though, that just looks so much nicer. And it makes me just feel better. On the inside. Eh, uh, down here, all done. I think, I think we've tapped everything here. I, I could have sworn there was another volcano around here somewhere, but maybe I'm thinking of another planet. But I think we've got it all done. And with all of these trees out here, we've got so much wood, this thing can run for an eternity. Let's just, uh, give it five minutes while the water catches up. And there goes the final piece. We finally hit the point where polluted water is flowing. And the polluted water goes in and gets sieved, and then it gets sent up here and into our tank. It's not a lot. Um, yep, there's the next few blobs going on. The reason being, this produces about 750 grams of water if it's running flat out. But to run flat out, it would need 4 kilos of ethanol, or 2 kilos of ethanol. We're not producing that much. We're producing 1.5. So this is averaging about 562 grams of water a second, which is about enough water to support... About five duplicates? Yeah, maybe a little bit less. So about five duplicates worth of oxygen. We've only got four on this planet, and three of them are about to leave on uh, on this rocket. So this place should be nice. As a little bit of a going away gift for Events in Horizon, they're getting their own private comfy bed because why not? We brought, we had we had some spare plastic, and I thought let's leave them a nice bed to go around. I mean, I think I think this whole place is done. There's nothing left to be le nothing left to be done here except for this whole biome. Whenever they fix it up, we'll uh, we'll have to return and do something with that. Otherwise, this place is solid. Though maybe we should bring back some of that reed fiber. Actually, no, we got plenty of thimble reed back home. Next up, though, uh, next up is going to be fire oni. Yeah, we need to go back here. And we need to come back here and make a permanent living residence. We're probably going to be building it up here in the sky area. And the plan is going to be... Well, this was sort of like a dry run. The plan will be we're going to wild plant some arbor trees. So we're going to have to bring pips with us. We're going to have to bring arbor acorns with us. We're going to have to make some artificial tiles. And then we're going to have to have the trees planted. Now, if we want to support one duplicant, we're going to need about six trees. So we're going to have to support six wild trees... Give them an atmosphere, keep them cool, provide them a cooling solution. We're also going to need backing plates. We're going to need a lot. It's going to be interesting. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it just yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out along the way. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.